Waves just released another new plugin. This one is called BB Tubes. What is that? It's basically just a really awesome saturator that has a bunch of different flavors and sounds to it. The BB stands for Beauty, which is an even harmonic generating saturator, and then Beast, which tends to favor more odd harmonic structure. It has more of an aggressive sound to it. Sometimes I get too excited and I just hit my microphone. So in this video, we're gonna take a look underneath the hood, then I'm gonna drag you into a session and see how it sounds on all the different instruments in a song. So here's what this new plugin looks like. The interface can be a little bit overwhelming at first, but I'll break it down for you so it's super easy to follow. The two main things you need to know in this plugin are the beauty knob and the beast knob. Okay, like I mentioned earlier, beauty increases the amount of even order harmonics. This helps the source sound warm and larger than life. The beast knob introduces more odd order harmonics than it does even order. So this has a little bit more texture to it, a little bit more grit, more aggression. So you can blend in the amount of beauty. So the thickness, fullness, largeness, and then a little bit of attitude with these two different knobs. A cool little feature that Waves added is this Type A, Type B. This changes the tube harmonic structure for just the beast saturation circuit. Okay, so if you're not digging what it sounds like with A, flip this knob and you're gonna get a little bit different tonal characteristics out of this saturation. Now something you have to be aware of is that this plugin will change its sound depending on how loud the input signal is. Okay, it's one of these weird plugins that do that so you have to be careful with your gain staging. But fortunately, Waves made it easy for us by adding the sensitivity knob right here. This basically controls the input gain, okay? So that's gonna influence the gain structure of this plugin. And you can see, just turning the sensitivity up, we're getting more saturation out of this. So really what the sensitivity knob is doing is it's just lowering the input gain, feeding these saturation circuits, but it's compensated on the end by increasing the gain by the same amount. So basically this just influences its sensitivity to the saturation. Now this little LED right here gives you an indication of how much total harmonic distortion is happening to your signal. Okay, so if you see a green signal like this, that tells us that it is a safe conservative input level, probably good to go. When you see yellow, Waves says that that's probably an ideal level of saturation. That's gonna give you a good balance of audible changes in tonality with enhancement to the, the source. And red is going to be for something that's gonna have audible distortion. So this would be more stylistic distortion rather than something that's just pleasing and, and transparent. Down here, you have this knob for this transformer. This is part of the magic of this plugin. Or what I understand is that this controls some of the harmonic structure of the tube modeling that's built into this plugin. It also adds a little bit of compression. And we're gonna look at this with software called Plugin Doctor to see exactly what this knob does. But if you're looking for a little bit cleaner sound, maybe you wanna come here and turn this off when you're using this plugin. Over here, we have basic tone controls, and this is going to just raise or lower the high-end signal. So I believe this is set to about 10 kilohertz. So if you want to boost the high frequencies that are getting fed into the saturation circuit, you can come here and just push this up. That's gonna add tremendous amounts of air to whatever you're using this on. If it starts getting too harsh, you can just back that off here as well. If you're looking to add a little air to your signal but you don't want to saturate or generate new harmonics of that high frequency information, I would suggest using the post EQ. It's gonna do the same thing just after all the saturation has occurred. This is probably gonna give you a little bit cleaner sound to it. If you need to do more gain staging adjustments, they have an input output knob control here. And finally, they have a dry wet mix knob here, which is great if you wanna use this for applications like mastering. Now this knob is what makes this plugin very special. It's called Bass Relief. And what this knob does is it controls the amount of bass that gets taken away from this saturation circuit. It makes the bass appear much cleaner, more articulate, and helps to do a great job of cleaning up any unwanted distortion that might be happening if you have bass heavy signals. I think this knob is what really sets this plugin apart. Now, I wanna show you one more thing 
because I'm so excited that Waves finally did this on this plugin. We look right here. It says up sample. This is something I've been wanting to see implemented on all of the Waves plugins forever. This plugin comes with up sampling options, meaning we can have this plugin run at higher sample rates internally to reduce any aliasing that these saturation circuits might be producing. Aliasing is a complicated topic. I have a video about aliasing up here, kind of gives you a basic overview of what it looks like, but upsampling can definitely help clean up any non-musical artifacts that get introduced from non-linear processes like saturators. So if you use this, I'm seeing a dramatic improvement at 2x upsampling, but by all means, if your computer can handle it, usually more is better. But trust your ears, play with the different settings, and see which one you like the most. So this is the fun part. This is where we get to do a little bit of sciencey stuff and see what's going on underneath the hood of this plugin. And you know what? While we're at it, let's just compare what it's doing to that free plugin, that Lil 2 plugin that was just released by Waves as well. All right, if you want to check out my review of this plugin, Magma Lil Tube, you can check that out by the link that's appearing at the top right now. And you can probably pick this up for a little bit cheaper than this BB Tubes plugin. But let's be real, there's so many more options, so much more fun stuff you can do with the BB tubes that it might be worth it just to invest the money and get this bigger version. So let's look at see what happens to the frequency balance when you just put this plug-in on without any drive. Here's our new frequency spectrum. It rolls off the sub frequencies as high as about 50 hertz and it adds a nice little bump here and then we have a little bump around 700 and here. If we look at BB tubes, you can see that they're very similar. There's one knob I didn't talk about. That's that bass relief knob, this one. If you take a look in Plugin Doctor, you can see exactly what this is doing. It's like a low shelf at 350 hertz or something. My guess is that if you have a bass heavy track, you could probably use something like this to help reduce the overall saturation sound of the bass and keep that nice and clean. Now, if you look at the manual, they say that this bass relief knob is compensated at the end of the chain. So my guess is that they have some sort of bass shelf afterwards that will raise that back up. So this is just reducing the bass that's fed into the saturation circuit. Concerning part to me is that I can see the bass decreasing on Plugin Doctor. So this is looking at the output level. And if we're seeing a decrease, when I turn this knob up, that tells me that it's actually gonna lower the bass frequencies here. Now this bass relief knob changes a lot when you have a little bit of this saturation in the circuit. Watch what happens. Now, instead of all of this decreasing like it was before, now we're just getting less 200 and we're getting almost a boost or a lift around 30 Hertz. Be very careful. If you're using this for rock or metal, really listen to your snare drum because the snare drum usually lives around 200 hertz. And if you're carving out two or three dB here, that's going to wreak havoc on the punch of your snare drum. But don't worry, we're going to check this on an actual session and verify if this is actually an issue. Okay, let's look at the harmonic analysis now. Okay, we're looking at Lil Tubes. So if we crank this thing up, we're basically getting all 1K, 2K, 3K. So it's a little bit of odd and even order harmonics. Let's take a look at what... BB tubes looks like, okay? Very similar again. When you don't have any settings on, it adds a series of harmonics, okay? If we turn the transformer on and off, it doesn't change the harmonic structure, okay? So it's not really impacting that much at this point. Okay, when we crank this up, what we end up getting is a bunch of harmonics are generated, but you can see our fundamentals at 1K, so this is at 2K, 3K, 4K, and so on. So this tells me that this beauty knob actually is generating both odd and even order harmonics. Okay, even order harmonics just means that our fundamental frequency, so I'm feeding this with a one kilohertz sine wave, you multiply that by an even number, and that's an even order harmonic. So if we multiply one kilohertz by two, we get two kilohertz. You multiply this by four, we get four kilohertz, okay? And we also see odd order. So if you multiply this by an odd number, like one, three, five, we see those harmonics here as well, okay? So it's generating both odd and even order harmonics. So at low settings of this beauty knob, the even order harmonics tend to be a little bit louder than the odd harmonics. 
But as you push this up and up and up and up, we start getting a little bit louder odd order harmonics. So this is gonna add a little bit of texture and grit at these highest settings. Let's take a look at the B saturation. Immediately, we're getting higher odd order harmonics, right? This is 3K, 5K, 7K, and it keeps getting louder and louder and louder. If you remember, I mentioned that there's this A and B, this changes the tube harmonic structure, so let's change that. And you can see that in fact, yeah, we're getting different harmonics here. So this is gonna have a little bit different sound or texture to it. So definitely experiment with this. If we increase the tone control here before the saturation circuit, okay, you can see that we're getting an increase in like the density of high frequencies here, okay? So kind of a cool thing. If we just do it post, we're just raising the amplitude of them. We're not adding more to it. Okay, so again, this, this should be a little bit more clean, uh, and this one's gonna add more of like a density to the top end. And if we change the transformer, now we're starting to get a little bit of changes to those harmonic structures. So this is playing a role in that tube modeling. Now let's take a look at the dynamics. So let's increase the sensitivity here and see if we're getting any type of compression. If we see the curve leave this diagonal line, that tells us that there's compression happening. And so right here, you're seeing some compressions occurring. So if we boost this up, do we change the overall compression curve? Let's see. So we're definitely adding compression. Something else that's interesting that you should be aware of is that when you increase this knob, this transfer function that's being plotted out is going above our unity gain line, meaning that the gain is increasing. So as you push this up, the volume is actually going to increase, which can fool you into thinking that this might sound better. Okay, so be aware that you're gonna have to come back and compensate probably here on the way out to bring that level back down to that unity gain line so you're not fooling your ears into thinking it sounds better. Because really, it's just getting a little bit louder. Now this is what it looks like with the B snob cranked all the way up. So this is very high ratio compression that's happening, but the knee seems to be pretty gentle. We turn off the transformer, not much has changed. Okay. Okay, so that's peeking underneath the hood of this plugin. Let's pull it into a session and see how it sounds. So just for consistency sake here, I'm going to use the same session that I used when I was reviewing the Lil 2 plugin. This is a cool song though, so don't you worry. This is a track by a band called Deer Spring out of DC. They're amazing. Check them out. I'm really excited to hear what this sounds like on some drums because there's a lot of cool stuff that we can do. Let's turn this on because we know that it does something to the signal just having it on with all these set to zero, right? So let's hear what that does. Now, remember what I said is that just having this on, it actually increases the gain by like a little bit. So let's make sure we're not fooling ourselves into thinking this plugin's adding some magic just because it sounds a little bit louder. Here we go. It does add this cool weight to the drum kit. And that's literally with the settings all on zero. So let's play with the beauty saturation, then the beast, and then I'm gonna mess with some of this tone to see if we can bring out a little bit more air in the drum kit in general. That's the sound you'd expect if you way, way overdo it on a drum kit, especially where there's a lot of sub energy. Let's see if this bass relief knob fixes all that farty, distorted kick drum sound. It certainly does, but if you notice, I feel like we lost all the energy, right? Listen. And we're gonna have to adjust the output gain because we're way, way, way louder now.
So I'm actually kind of impressed by this. It it does impact the punch of the snare. It does take a little bit of the sub energy out of the kick, but for us turning this to 10 and totally saturating the drums, it actually sounds pretty good. I think this would sound amazing on a drum room bus where you tend to have a buildup of those frequencies anyways, because listen to the sense of space that having this on the drum bus adds. Everything just sounds so much bigger, right? And more present. Yes, the bass is distorted, the kick drum's distorted, but it's kind of a cool thing. Let's try the beast setting. Wow. Yeah, that's aggressive, that's for sure. Let's try the B, type B. Tube structure. So B to me feels a little bit more gentle. So if, if uh, it's too much with A, but you're still going for that aggressive sound, B might be the sweet spot for you. Let's also try this bass release setting. It sounds pretty cool, but Again, I can hear that it's carving out 200 hertz out of my drum bus because the snare body is missing. The sub information is kind of there. It's just a little bit more distorted now, but it's totally different than what we had before. But that's the whole point of a saturator on a drum bus, right? I'm super impressed with the sense of space that this adds. And I think the secret to using this on a drum bus would be to dial in this bass relief carefully to make sure you're not killing your drum snare punch and then pulling back and doing this a little bit in parallel to add in a little bit more sense of space but not kill off the transients that you have. Okay, let's play with this tone knob and see what we can do in terms of the tonality or the density of the air from this plugin. Wow, that is just sizzly. Ton of people are gonna love this on a vocal. I can already tell. I'm willing to bet Waves is gonna be responsible for like all music moving forward being way too bright <laughs> because you can very easily trick yourself into thinking that this brighter sound is better. So be very careful here. Here's the post settings. Let's do a quick AB, switching between the sound of the post and the pre. So you can hear the difference in tonality when you do the high end boost before the saturation and then after. We're gonna need to do some sort of saturation. So let's just set this to an aggressive setting. All right, so let's check it out. This is without anything. This is with the saturation and a lot of the pre-boost. Oh, it's so bright. Sorry, I have to turn that down. Here's post. The pre-boost into the saturation actually doesn't sound as obvious to my ears as it does when you do the post-boost. Okay, it's subtle, but this, to me, adds just a, a more, like I said, density across a bigger range, whereas this is much more focused on just making everything sound brighter. So let's try to just set this up so it sounds awesome for this particular drum set.
right, I think this is a good setting, but again, we have to find that sweet spot because I do feel like it's taken a little bit away from the drum punch. But this is a very usable tool on a drum bus. Pretty cool. Let's put it on the vocal, huh? All right, here's the vocal without anything. When a magazine said for days. All right, let's add the saturator, shall we? It's a silencer for good measure. And with my face painted, you won't see me coming Without. among the trees. I wish that I could be more stationary. I just wish I could see. Man, when you put these saturators at the end of a vocal chain, it just really makes the delays and all those different effects just really pop. And this is after a quick little slap delay that I have on this vocal chain. But I don't know. I, I really like the sound of this. I'm curious to hear what this tone does to the vocal because I think this could be a secret weapon for a lot of people's mixes. All right, so just as a preventative measure here, I'm going to take off all the treatment I did to my vocal chain to really bring out the top end because this is just going to make it sound way, way, way too bright. If you want to learn how to do all the EQing and processing for vocals, I have a comprehensive video. I'll put a link right up here. Check that out. I take you from start to finish on my favorite Waves vocal chain. That sounds awesome. All right. So the vocals should now sound a little dull. When a magazine yep. said for days so let's try to bring some of that air back using this tone knob. Here we go. For good measure and with my face painted you won't see me coming. Out. I wish that I could be more stationary. So something important to keep in mind that when you're dialing this plugin in, you're probably going to want to go to the loudest part of the song because the tonality of this plugin will change based on the input level, remember? So if you go to a part that's really loud and dynamic, that's going to be where the most saturation is going to occur. So you want to set the levels there so that the quieter parts you know, it's a little bit more subtle. You don't want to set it at the quietest parts and when it gets to the loud part, it starts all distorting and doing all this ugly stuff. But this is sounding pretty oh, I awesome. Wish I could see that clearly. It's a little bit sibilant now, but we can treat that with the de-esser if we needed to. See me coming. Let's play with the post gain here. Among the trees I wish that I could be more stationary I just wish I could see that. I feel like this is a little bit of a more clean sound, a little bit more natural sound for the vocals. So I would probably lean on the pre-tonal boost here just to add the air aspect to a vocal. Let's try the beast see settings. That clearly. And why do all the words replace empty cabinet drawers and what? That's a cool sound, especially if you're going for like a distorted aggressive part in a song. Why do all the words seem so full to me when I just won't accept? And then you can always do both the beauty and the beast saturation together. Wait a while till the end of the 40 kill when a magazine said for days of silence for good measure and with my face painted you won't I mean, to me that is I think where the magic is in this plugin is being able to combine that warm, thick, beauty style saturation with the beast. And then this tone knob is awesome. Don't see me Without. Among the trees. With. I wish that I could be more. Okay, this is way louder. Let's fix that. Be more stationary. Oh, I just wish I could see that clearly. And why do all the words replace empty cabinet drawers? And why do all the words? So it's a little bit too bright, but I think this is a good sweet spot for this plugin. 
Uh, let's see what it sounds like in the full mix. Here we go. So yeah, I really like the sound of this on vocals as well. You can hear it really cleans up like the muddiness in the vocal, right? Listen to the low mid range. Oh, I just wish I could see that clearly. And why do all the words replace empty cabinet drawers? And why? Might have to add this to my vocal chain. All right, let's check it out on Guitar Bus. Here we go. You can hear just having the transformer on adds weight to the guitars. Listen. Uh, but you know what? We got to be careful because this transformer button also increases the volume a little bit. So don't get fooled. All right. So here we go. Before and after. No, it definitely is adding some weight to the low mids of the guitars. I think that sounds cool. It's it's kind of like adding a transformer to the guitar signal, which coincidentally is what they're modeling. Way to go, Bobby. You're brilliant, man. All right, let's see what this beauty sounds like on these guitars. has a really, really nice harmonic structure to it that works great with electric guitars. And I mentioned this in another review, but it almost feels like this is like a guitar pedal that's going before the amp, right? It's just adding this nice additional saturation to it that doesn't sound harsh or disconnected from what I think of when I think of guitar tone. Let's try the Beast. Obviously, that's probably too much. Let's try the B type distortion. So, this has it's either a little bit quieter or there's a little bit less top end in it. Um, I think this sounds more natural for like a guitar. So, let's gain match this and uh, see how it sounds. It does give it a little bit more perceived volume. It sounds a little bit brighter, a little bit higher in a mix, and then also you're starting to get a little bit more depth. What if we add the beauty to it too? Maybe a little this bass relief to kind of clean up those 200 hertz mid range that we don't really like. Yeah, that actually cleans up the boxiness a lot. Wow, I do like it on a guitar bus. Let's listen to it in the mix. It's, yeah, it just adds a little bit of that air to the guitars. Let's see what this tone knob does. Maybe that'll be a secret weapon as well. Or it's going to sound really harsh and terrible. Let's find out. Uh, 
I do not like what it sounds like with it boosted, but maybe what people could do is use this to make the guitars fit a little bit nicer if they're kind of clashing with the vocals. The vocals kind of live in that 10K range. That's where the presence in the air are for the vocal. And I find if you have guitars that have a lot of that energy in there, it kind of turns it into like static. What I would suggest is actually play with this to see if you can find the right level of that high frequency information for your guitars. This is a really nice knob for that. All right, here's our bass tone. It's really, really cool. Traditionally, bass frequencies are really hard for saturators because they break up, stunned, flubby, you know, things like that. However, because we have this bass relief knob, I have hope, I have some hope that this is going to sound good on this bass. Let's check it out. And again, same thing as before, just having these both set to zero um, with this transformer being on just changes the way the bass sounds in general. It has a lot more weight now. Maybe borderline muddy, but let's dial this in and see what we can get. I mean, to be honest, that sounds pretty cool to me. It's not breaking up in a really ugly way like a lot of saturators do. I'm, I'm really impressed. Let's see what the bass relief does to the tone. Yeah, you can really clean up the energy. So you lose a lot of the rumble and you lose the gritty distortion from the beauty. Let's try the same thing now with the beast. Oh yeah, that's metal, man. And I prefer, well, I prefer the Type B style. Let's dial this back a little bit. Let's give it a little bit of that top end grit, but let's see if we can clean it up with the bass relief again. This is punching a weird hole in the bass frequencies that I'm not liking. So instead of using bass relief to clean up the distortion, I would say let's just back off the beast knob here and then we can back this down lower because that might lead to issues with your mix because it's really changing the low end information. Like that right around here kind of has like the best of both worlds. You're getting a thick, consistent sub bass out of this. And then you get a little bit more grit in, in the pick attack that's cutting the bass through the mix. What I would actually suggest, and I mentioned this in the last video as well, is that if you do decide to use saturation or something like that on a bass guitar, you might consider splitting the bass guitar into low frequencies and then high frequencies and then putting your saturators on just the higher frequency stuff. That way you don't get that really, really obvious, farty, flubby style of distortion that tends to happen. It's gonna be focused more on that pick attack that's gonna help the bass cut through the mix if you put it on the high frequencies. That way you can keep the low sub information nice and tight. But definitely experiment, right? The world is your oyster, as they say. One final thing. Let's put this on the master bus, and I'm gonna crank this up sampling all the way to 8x. All right, it is on the master bus. It's at the very end of my master bus, just before my limiter, okay? So we're gonna be saturating everything feeding into the limiter. So, so let's start by just seeing what it sounds like just having it on the track. This transformer thing is gonna add its own tube characteristic to the song, so let's see if we like what it does. Here we go. Alright, yeah, it's doing a lot 
to this song already. With everything at zero, I can hear huge differences. In this case, what's happening is that our level is really loud, right? We're just before our limiter. So we're gonna need to turn down the sensitivity dramatically so that this plugin isn't working too hard right away. If we have it set the way it is right now, it's already pushing too much saturation, too much distortion, and it's affecting the, the master bus too much, I think. So by pulling the sensitivity down, that gives us a little bit more room to work with to dial in the right blend of saturation we want for our master chain. So let's try this again. cool that's better that is usable before it was not usable so if you run into that where it's just there's too much distortion even with everything set to zero you got to turn down the sensitivity or you have a gain staging problem before that plugin let's try to dial in a little bit of this beauty a little bit of this beast see what we can do to try to bring out the most out of this track and add the most level here we go want a loud master you just turn that to 10 all right there we go we're at minus 2 lufs perfect all right so i hope you guys can all hear that right our kick drum is starting to get kind of flubby so we want to back it way down Something like that. We might want to use a little bass relief, right? Because that's going to allow us to use more of the saturation without the low end getting messed up. I hope you hear the difference in tonality when I turn this to 100, right? There's no low energy there anymore. It's totally screwed up. So keep it very light on this bass relief knob. Try this beast. Man, you really can't push it too far because you're gonna start hearing that audible distortion. But I am liking what it is doing at these subtle settings. So I'm curious to see how much volume this has added to our master. So if you look at the short term right here, we added over one decibel of volume. Now, while I love a loud master, I still can hear a little bit of that distortion. So we're gonna have to sacrifice some volume for a nice, clean, punchy, dynamic master. Sorry, I know people hate hearing that. They want the loudest thing in the world, but sometimes you can't fight physics and you have to fit everything into a box. So let's do this because we gotta serve the song, not the loudness meter. Now let's dial this wet knob back a little bit and then run this in parallel with the master bus. And I think that's going to be the sweet spot to make this a super loud, awesome sounding master using this saturation plugin. Here we go. I think this bass relief is still sucking a little too much out. So I'm going to drop this down, take this down one more notch each. All right, let's do the final AB. Here we go. I like it. I like it a lot. So pretty cool tool. So many different settings, a lot of adjustments you can make, a lot of different tonalities you can pull out of a source track. And as you saw in this video, I was able to put it on pretty much every single instrument and it sounded good. 
You just have to learn how to tweak the settings a little bit to make them match the tonal characteristics of those instruments. And it even sounds great on the master bus. You just have to be aware that the low energy will change depending on how you have this plugin set up. So as long as you're focusing your attention there, I think it's a really, really great tool to help increase perceived volume, especially on a master bus. So which one of these instruments did you think it sounded best on? Was it the drums? Was it vocals? Was it the master chain? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you've made it this far, be sure to like and subscribe because I drop new videos weekly that's gonna help you level up the quality of your music. And as a reminder, I have a free gift waiting for you in the description. Again, it's my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins guide. So it has a list of my favorite freebies in that PDF. So you can go and download it for free in the description, so go do that. I wanna thank you so much for your time and attention today. My name is Bobby Balo, and I hope to see you in another video.